Good morning. Good morning. Elizabeth Inman here with our one year Bible study, reading all the way through the Bible. We're on day 12 this year. Be sure and invite your friends to join. If anybody's needing Bibles and can't afford to buy a Bible, or you know somebody who can't afford to buy a Bible, then you contact us. You can call us at 918-396-5171. You can write to us or send donations to P.O. Box 1149, Skytook, S-K-I-A-T-O-O-K, -O -O Oklahoma, 74070. Good morning, Debbie Nolan, boy, girls, and, and guys. We have a testimony today from Miss Debbie Nolan. So as you all know, on Wednesday, we're supposed to do our Bible study together. And she contacted me at, I think it was about 4.15 in the morning that she was on the way to the emergency room, severe uh, pain in her side. Uh, she knew it was not her appendix since she doesn't have an appendix. Mm. And we all prayed and results came back that there was no surgery. It was not a gallbladder. Um, some healing in her, in her tummy needs to take place. Praise God. Praise God. Nothing, nothing that required surgery. I'm telling you, when you be um, believe when you pray that you receive. Believe when you pray. I, I, I've had a lesson this year on that. Um. I've had to stop and examine myself. When does my belief start about my prayer requests? And I'll just tell you guys, when I stopped and did a self-evaluation about that, I realized that I didn't believe when I prayed. It's like I waited for the answer to prayer after I prayed, believing that God hears me. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I believe God hears every prayer we pray. I believe he answers every prayer we prayed. But at what point was I believing it? And I realized that I was believing it after the fact. And it's already a done deal. Healing happened <laughs> on the cross. <sighs> you know what? When I prayed for Debbie Nolan that morning, I believed it when I prayed it. Good morning, Callie. We have been praying for you, Callie, and you know what? I believe as I prayed for you that your healing has already taken place and your fingers are getting better, sweetie. I want you to know, Callie, you're a dream big girl and we love you. <laughs> We've had you in our prayer request, on our prayer journal. Believe when you pray and you shall receive. We have to we have to finish the process. Believe it, pray it, receive it. Use your God-given imagination to see those prayers answered. Hmm. Hmm. So we're in Genesis chapter 26 and 27 today. And oh my goodness, what a mess. What a mess. It just reminded me this morning of how we're saying how bad things are, what a mess things are, our families are messed up, our ethics, our morals are messed up. And it, it just reminded me once again, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. I mean, you don't find a much more dysfunctional family than, than Isaac's immediate family. Jacob, Esau, Isaac, Rebecca. I mean, right off the bat, Re Rebecca has her favorite. Isaac has his favorite. You know, if you find yourself in that situation that you're favoring, <clears throat> if you're favoring one child over another child, pray and ask God to fix that. Ask God to change your heart. Ask God to bring the level of love for the non-favorite child up to match the level of the love for the favorite child. And I will say this, ask God to multiply your love for both of your children if you find yourself having favorites. I think we have a picture of that. But, 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 I, I'm not going to read the whole story. This is where hmm, Isaac, Rebecca, 
are raising Esau and Jacob. First thing that I see is, you know, they're trying to settle themselves. Uh, this this really struck me. I Can I just, we're all friends here, right? I mean, you guys, I just feel like you guys love me or you wouldn't come on here with me. So I'm just, I'm just talking to my inner circle of people that love me. Do y'all know there's still work to be done in me? I'm just saying boy, do I have work that needs to be done in me. Because Isaac <clears throat> and Rebecca was traveling, settled, and they dug a well. Isaac and his people dug a well. And the people around got aggravated. And uh, you know, what, what was the word they said? Um, so Isaac um, there was a dispute. That's what it was. There was a dispute over the well. So Isaac's men then dug another well, but again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute. So two times they dig a well. And I, I can't help but stop and think about what it took for them to dig a well back then. They didn't have an auger. They didn't have a tractor. They didn't have a drill. They they hand dug this well. And there was a dispute over it. I mean, really, who dug the well, right? The, I mean, am I the only one that would think that? Who dug the well? And it wasn't easy to dig that well. And I watch Isaac move on because there was a dispute. How much better would our life be if we just moved on when there was a dispute? How much better would our life be? Now, I, I would like to think that I could do that. I mean, there's a reason he tells us to offer the other cheek. Somebody slaps you, offer them the other cheek. I mean, that's kind of like what I'm seeing here. Isaac dug a well. They disputed it. It's like he just offered that well to him because he moved on to the next one. And he dug another one and there's a dispute. And it's just like he offered that to them and he moved on. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm just telling y'all that'll preach, but it's not the number. Uh, as much as that spoke to me, and I, Lord, I pray that I'm there. I pray that if they steal my shirt, I'll offer them my cloak. I mean, you guys, you can't get here. You cannot get here in these places in the Lord by superficially reading a book and saying, oh, check mark, I read my Bible today. You can't get here without some deep, intense praying, some being still and letting God pull that darkness out of us. I mean, I'm not doing Bible study for the sake of doing Bible study. And I'm certainly not doing Bible study just so I can say I do a Bible study. I, I want us to get the deep things of God. I want us to allow him to penetrate our hearts so deeply that the intimacy that results changes us. Even in places we didn't even know we needed changed. I want us to be, I want us to be transformed. I want my mind to never even look at things like this the same way. I mean, instantly this morning I thought, wow, how hard was it for them to dig that well? And he just gave it up. No fight, no argument, just he moved on and dug another one. And then he dug another one. Ah, okay, but on to the nuggets. What really, 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 really spoke to me. I guess it's kind of tied to that in that my questioning this morning, Lord, would I? I mean, would I? What if I walked in to bur bur burglars, <laughs> burglars, <laughs> thieves in my home and they're ransacking my closet? Would I be able to walk up and say, Oh, don't take that one. This one's much better quality than that one. You, if you, if you're really needing this, 
to here, take this one. Could I? Could I? I listened to a story this morning about a woman who was in an airport and a man had a gun and it went off and she was able to convince herself she chose not to panic. While everybody was yelling, run, run, run. <clears throat> she chose not to react, but instead to respond to the Holy Spirit. And while everybody else was diving under chairs, there'd been a gunshot go off in an airport for crying out loud. She stood and walked. And as she walked out loud, out loud, she spoke the words. She called herself by name, Elizabeth, do not panic. Elizabeth, do not panic. Is that the one you listened to this morning? I hadn't got to that part. Yet. Okay. Elizabeth, do not panic. And she went to the column and she said, I knew if I could get to the column, I could, I could settle in peace and hear the Holy Spirit. And then as she did that, she spoke out loud. She spoke out loud, took the authority that whatever darkness was there. And she said, I screamed it. Darkness be gone in the name of Jesus. Peace overtake anything that's happening right now. I don't know her exact words. Um, and then it wasn't until later, hours and hours later, because they held him out on the tarmac. They evacuated the, the airport, held him out on the tarmac for three hours in the cold before they even could come back in. And then she just happened to get the very last flight because everything was canceled. And she had made a friend earlier that day on a prior flight. Had they had exchanged numbers and she texted to make sure that woman was okay and said, did you get caught up in the chaos? And the woman wrote back and said, no, I was on the other side of it. But I sat next to a woman who was standing by the shooter. And so she described what was taking place. That the man grabbed his bag, put his hand in to get the gun. And when he put his hand on the gun, it went off. And then he attempted to pull that gun out. At the very time this woman is yelling, peace, be still. I command the darkness to leave this airport. His hand froze inside the bag and he couldn't get the gun out. And so he just ran off. Hmm. It's tied to today's reading. How we should respond and not react. I will tell you at 4.15 in the morning for Debbie Nolan to be in enough pain that she needed to be transported to the emergency room and for her to have the peace of mind to request prayer from all of us, that was a response, not a reaction. A response. How do we, how do we respond or do we react? My sister Carrie God got a hold of her in this revelation a few years ago. And man, oh man, she's got revelation upon revelation about responding and not reacting. It's in our reaction that we make knee-jerk decisions and then we regret those knee-jerk decisions. Sometimes we just need to be still. We just need to be still and, and listen for the Holy Spirit. See, that's why... It's why I want to do these Bible studies with you. I want to, I share my stories on those moments. I share sometimes when I struggle and I have to still myself and be still. I'll share that with you. Not because I want people to know my struggles for crying out loud. This goes all over the world. Sometimes I share my triumphs when I'm able to push through and, I, and I'm able to hear from inside what God's speaking to me, not because I want glory and honor, but because I want any act, any deed that I do, if there's any goodness at all, to bring glory to my Father. And, and when I bring glory to my Father, you might seek the same God that I serve, the only God, the one true God. But if you can see anything in our stories, us, us, us that bring these Bible studies to you through the struggles, but through the triumphs that you'll say, wow, you, you got what out of the Bible today? Well, um, let me read a little bit deeper. Let me, let it not just be black letters on a white piece of paper. Don't just get caught up in listening. Don't, don't just get caught up in listening to your, to your Bible. 
don't, I mean, it's fine to listen, but don't let it just be that, oh, well, I can get this done because I can listen to it. No, 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 no. Guys, seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. And, and I want to get to my nugget. So we see this dysfunctional family. They lie to each other. They trick each other. I mean, they they trick the patriarch of the family on his deathbed for crying out loud. I mean, look at the extent they went to to convince Isaac that Jacob was really Esau bringing him the food. <laughs> and I want to I want to pick this up this story up in verse 27. So this is going to be, um, yes, it's uh, Genesis 26, verse 27, I believe. Yes. I think I'm at the right place. Yes. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced and, and he blessed his son. And then this is what I have circled. He said, the word said is what my nugget is today. Said. Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors, which the Lord has blessed. From the heaven, the dew of heaven and the richness of earth, may God always give you abundant harvests of grain and bountiful new wine. New wine. May many nations become your servants and may they bow down to you May you be the master over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed and all who bless you will be blessed. Uh, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. He said, so this was a, a result of a trip. For those of you that have not read the story, Rebecca went to Jacob. Jacob was her favorite son and said, you go get the blessing because your dad's getting ready to die. So you disguise yourself as Esau, the firstborn, because the firstborn is the one that was supposed to have the blessing. The firstborn was supposed to have the inheritance. And, and following the advice of his mother, he tricks his dad into giving him that blessing. How was the blessing given? He said, he spoke the words. That's all he did. He didn't write out a will and testament. He didn't write a check. He didn't hand him over a bunch of cash. He didn't build a, an in vitro fertilization place so that he could have lots of kids. He spoke, he spoke the blessing. And I, once again, just as I was able to see myself about building that, digging that well, and I could see how I, I get ownership sometimes of things that are not mine to have ownership of. I mean, you know, when you work hard, you go to work every day, every day you go to work and you work hard and every day you go to work and you work hard. Are you getting me? And you write that check to pay your mortgage. We get a place where we feel ownership over the home that we're purchasing or even the rent that we're paying. It, it does something to our psyche if we're not in God's word, listening to him every day. And all of a sudden, I think this is my house instead of God's sanctuary that he has spoken to me about this home. I think I have a right to limit who comes in here because by golly, this is my home. This is my house. Instead of doing what the word says, and that is invite strangers in. Give them a place to sleep. Give them bread. <clears throat> and I got the comparing this morning, how we are today. And I'm, I'm just going to be real with you. I've got five children, five adult kids. I can't right now today on January the 12th tell you I remember the last time I said a blessing over my children. In fact, I don't believe I've done this type of a blessing over my children. 
Now, I have had moments in time when I have spoke life into my children. But if I just do an inventory right now today, I have spoken more wor words of worry and concern over my children than I have blessings over my children. I went through a period of time of some rough times with some of my kids that I would speak words like, you're a mighty man of God. You'll make the right decision. You will live. You will not die. You will flourish in the presence of the Lord. I've said those things at times, but how sad is it that I've been doing ministry for 15 years? I have a live Bible study that goes worldwide. I do retreats across the country. I speak. I I proclaim the good news. And as I did an inventory today, I can just tell you that I the inventory revealed to me more words of worry and concern over my children than words of blessing over my children. You want to talk about a powerful nugget this morning, because it didn't just end with what I read this morning. It continued on. He said, and he spoke that blessing. And then Esau comes back. And so what does Esau do? He prepares a meal and he brings it in. And he says, sit up, my father, and eat my wild game so that you can give me your blessing. See, they knew that Isaac's time was short, that he was, he was not going to be with them much longer. But Isaac asked him, who are you? And Esau replied, Esau, I'm your, it's your first son, Esau. And then Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably. Now, why did he tremble uncontrollably? We could say it's because he knew he'd been tricked. But what he really knew is the words had already been spoken. When Esau heard his father's words, he let out a cry and a bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too. But Isaac said, your brother was here and he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. I, I'll just go ahead and read it. <clears throat> I want to I go back to verse 33 because I don't want to leave anything out. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, then who just served me wild game? I've already eaten it. And I blessed him just before you came. And yes, that blessing must stand. The words had already been spoken and the words could not be taken back. You think that's not a nugget for us today? Y'all know my mom's been really sick the last four or five weeks. And I look back and have the words I spoken been, been words of blessing or worry and concern. Hmm. You have a bad situation in your life right now today. It's bad. It looks horrible. What words are you speaking? Guys, I'm telling you, God is showing me more and more and more all the time about the power of words. I mean, we don't get it. Do you know that right now today, I cannot think of one human being in my life that has on purpose spoken words of blessing I take that back. I just got corrected. <laughs> I do know somebody who has, and, and it's Debbie Nolan. Debbie Nolan spends hours thinking about her grandchildren. I, I will say it about her grandchildren more so than her children. Debbie has not just spoken words of blessing over her grandchildren. She's written them down for them to have as a legacy once she's gone. And we got a lot of years with Debbie Nolan still with us. But other than that, can you think of one person in your life who has openly spoken a blessing, let alone blessings, over their children? But we'll sure talk about, oh, I mean, I can't believe they just got a ticket. You know, I, 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 told, I told them 
that if they didn't quit driving fast, they was going to get it and they would pay. I'm just using that as an easy example. I told them not to argue with their boss. I knew they'd get in trouble if they kept arguing with their boss. Instead of, oh, bless you, my child, I thank God that his spirit is in you so much that you know that you have to obey the la la laws of the land. And I know that God guiding you will guide you to drive safely and not speed. Oh, I know that the God that's in you will cause you to pull back those words you want to speak. And you'll only speak the words to your boss that, that, that your heavenly father wants you to speak. I'm not saying that we can do all this in the presence of. But you know what? Most of the words of worry and concern we speak is not in the presence of anyway. It's behind their backs. Man, you think I didn't get some nuggets out of this morning's reading? You think I don't have a lot of work to do to let God get those little dark strings out of my heart? It, it's called worry. I disguise it as concern. I, I, <laughs> I, well, I'm their mother. Of course I can. Well, I'm their friend. Of course I, but he, they could, this whole family knew the word had been spoken. The words had been spoken. They could not undo it. Not only that, but look at what this family knew about the power of words. The spoken blessing is what moved them forward. What is what moved Jacob forward into the blessings of God, into the legacy that we're reading about today. I mean, we're going to read about Jacob and, 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 and how his descendants are more than all the stars in the sky. Wow. We underestimate the power of the words that come out of our mouth and we spend no time thinking about how those thoughts got there to begin with because our words are only a picture of what's in our head, our, our brain, which then points to the darkness that's in our heart. See, that takes some quiet time before the Lord. You're not going to get that fixed just because you heard Elizabeth talk this morning. That's going to take some time in your prayer closet, just you and God. I'm going to spend some time in my prayer closet, just me and God, on this very thing. Oh, man, it got me this morning. It got me so much that I didn't get a whole lot out of the rest of it. <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about it. The power that they understood, the power of their words to the point that they didn't even go back and attempt to say. It, it was done. The blessing had been spoken. Wow. Likewise, the curse has been spoken. And I can't help but think of Peter. Peter, who Jesus is telling them what's getting ready to happen. Once again, it's a near-death experience. This was a near-death experience. Jesus is telling them, they're coming for me. And Peter says, Lord, I'll kill them all. And Jesus rebukes him and tells him, get behind me, Satan. Three times you will deny me, Jesus tells Peter, before the rooster crows. And sure enough, three times, he his words denied Christ. And now, fast forward, and Jesus has been resurrected, and he's walking the face of the earth. One of the first people Jesus looks for is Peter. Actively, it's written down, he looked for Peter. And when he sees him, so he, Peter denied him three times. What does Jesus do? Three times. Three times, do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Well, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. I don't think that's a coincidence, folks. I mean, what if, what if, it's just a what if, what if it takes a blessing to counter every worry we spoke? 
What if it takes a blessing? And, and, and I think about those people who will say, you know, I think about those people who will say, well, this child's my favorite. This one's not. I think about those people who say things way worse than worry. Oh, well, my, 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 my daughter's just a liar. She's a, she's just a perpetual liar. Oh, my child's just, my child's just sick. Mm -mm. Well, my friend, what if, what if to counter that it really took a spoken word to counter it? I'm, I'm way behind y'all. I don't call people names. I, I was raised by a very godly mother who would not allow me to call people names. I couldn't say bad things about people. Thank God, now that I'm thinking about this and the manner in which I'm thinking about it. But I think about the times when, oh, well, I wonder what they're going to do next. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I just don't think I can take this anymore. Oh, if I hear one more time, I mean, I, the frivolous way we throw around our words. I mean, it's no wonder I told you guys two years ago, God's working on me to be a woman of few words. Oh, sometimes I wonder if I've made any progress at all. And yet here's the deal, guys. I believe that this came to me the way it did today because of the progress I have made. Do you know, in all the years, there's not been a year yet since I started doing these Bible studies live, I started off telling y'all I was in the university of learning about the power of my words. That I graduated from kindergarten, past grade school, maybe in high school, probably in the university of learning about the power of words. I, from the first time I ever hit play or record on one of these devices, I've been in the school of learning about the power of my words. And I've been reading through this Bible, not to mention the other times I read this Bible and read these stories over and over and over and over again and didn't get this lesson that I got today. So rather than letting it beat me up because Romans 8, 1 says, there's therefore now no condemnation in Christ. I'm rejoicing that I'm now seeing it in more and more places throughout the Bible. It is to me, my God dropped of confirmation that I'm getting it more and more and more. That's what I want to be at a place that the only words I speak are words of life, that people may thrive because I spoke life into them instead of speaking death. Oh, this person will never do it right. This person has, this person's doing this again. Well, well I know the God in that person. That's not the intent of that person. The God in that person will correct that. I see God in that person. I choose to see God and not see the darkness. Ah, oh, I got a situation going on in my life right now that there is a struggle with that going on right now. <laughs> Lord, guide me. It's not about the pressure around here of what should be done. It's what must be done from God himself. Wow. And I know that I know that I know the words that I speak will have lasting impact, impact way beyond these four walls right here. I know that. And this lesson today was so timely for me. You guys have no idea how timely for me it was today. The power of our words. Mm. And I'm really going to end on that today. I know I didn't cover the rest of the Bible reading. Pray for me. Pray that I continue to get the revelation. Please pray for me. I'm asking y'all if you would pray for me. I want to be all God wants me to be. I want to be that light that shines. I'll be able to do that so much more if each one of you would pray for me. And I'll pray for you. I do pray for you. Our team prays for you. Together, we're better, y'all. Mm -hmm. God bless y'all. I love you. Oh, by the way, it's thankful Thursday. I'm very thankful for those prayers. Thank you guys.